Okay, so I did clean up the the turntable, the Clorox wipe. This one wasn't, wasn't horrible. And there's a very interesting splice on the uh, RCA cable, so there I may need to replace these RCA cables. But all right, so receivers on, power. Yeah. You have one channel. And the weird thing is, the channel I'm getting is the one with the funky splice. So, probably new RCA cables on this. Yeah. So I'll show you the funky splice. Well, the stylus is good, so that's good. All right, so let me show you what's going on here. Luckily, I've got 15,000 RCA cables that I can use to fix this. So here's the one that works. Here's the one that doesn't. <laughs> so this... This funky splice here is the one that I'm actually getting sound from. And look at that, that's masterful work right there. All right, so I need to let my soldering iron warm up and I'm gonna have to flip this over or maybe I can do it from the top. Let's see, these RCA cables are going in down here somewhere. So let's see what Of an interesting turntable. It has a has a sensitivity uh, adjustment, and then a speed button that says normal and inverse. So I'm not sure what that means, but I don't see on the front a 33 or 45. It says. Compu selector system and then the size is automatic so I would assume I would assume it goes to 45 based on the size of the record and then maybe if you have a let's say you have a full size LP that's 45 you would maybe flip inverse over I've got a couple of those maybe we'll try it out likely we won't because I'll forget that I just mentioned that and <laughs> I won't remember that you know uh, months from now when I'm editing the video. So let's take these out. Yeah, there were several linear tracking turntables. You know, the issue with these is that they use integrated circuit computer chips to control the logic and when those go bad, if they go bad, you can't replace them, or they're hard to find. So, got a couple of pioneers in this batch, but one is missing half the parts. So. But you know what? That's probably why it was at the Goodwill or sold at a garage sale. Is what I'm guessing. There we go. Okay. RCA cables, RCA cables, RCA cables. Where are the RCA cables? RCA cables are here. So it's this cord and it attaches right there. So. Oops. Got these. To use some zip ties. I was editing another video and I realized I use zip ties. I don't know for most of the repair, uh, the un the unorthodox micro secchi repair, and I think I use zip ties three or four times in the video. So 
when I was editing it, I was like, man, I keep talking about these zip ties. So every time I, I use zip ties, I put, I love zip ties in the video. And I hate these connector things because they are always a pain in the butt to remove once they're in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clip it. Um, here. don't like these at all. I always have the damnedest time getting them out. So what there is, there's a clip here. Oh, that's not gonna work. And if I can get it out, I'll show you what I'm fighting with. Yeah, oh, here we go. Maybe. So that RCA cable is caught in here, right? And there's like a, it's like a little snapping. There we go. So what happens is you put the RCA cable in here and this part comes down and it snaps over it. And then this locks the RCA cable in place so you can't yank it out from the table. If you hadn't seen one of those before, or worked with one of those before. All right, so let me find an RCA cable. And I try to use the original ground. So I try to get a cable that is the same. Oh, I'm gonna have to run a new ground because I cut it. I didn't peel that one off. Oh, I can actually splice that though. So what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm pulling the the ground wire off and I'll use some shrink and I'll splice it to the original ground here so that way I don't have to remove it. Sometimes I'll use uh, new cables. Uh, I like to repurpose cables when I can. And I like them to kind of match the system. I got some cables right here. And let's see how long these are. And that's that. What do I do with that? Oh, there it is. Okay. All right. And I like to leave myself plenty of room. So I'm going to clip these. And if you haven't done this before, here's what this process looks like. And I've done it in other videos. But what I'm going to do is strip away carefully without cutting any of the underlying wires. And sometimes I've gotten into trying to repurpose some of these RCA cables and the design of the cable is such that I can't really use it. So I kind of end up mutilating a cable that I really didn't need to. So this could totally be one of those cables where I can't reuse it, but I got plenty more. But I'll show you this one side. Gosh, if I can get this outer, this outer insulation off. Man, that's thick. Okay, so here's the cable. So this, I assume, is going to be the left because it's white. Right, so there's a thin copper wire running through here. And it goes into the table like this. 
right? So that's how that's going to attach there. Let me check the, what I assume is going to be the red side. So this one is probably pink. Should be anyway. But some of these cables, I mean, you don't... Like, I don't even know how old these cables are. This one is... Same color. So... Now I could use a multimeter to figure out which is which. But what I'm going to do is just trace the cable and... So, okay, so this one is white, and there's a little bit more ground wire on this one, so this is white, this is red. All right. Are interesting. It's just a little wire that's looped here to uh, that you would solder these two. Oftentimes it's a board or a flat piece of metal with little holes in it. These are these are wires that are just kind of soldered to the board in, in place. Interesting. That's new. Okay, so old wires, cables, I should say. Now, and these might actually be too big to go in here. I think they are. Oh, I can probably still use them. All right. So fat was white. left and skinny was red. Tuck that down underneath there like so. And I need to remove a little bit of this. I need to buy a good set of wire strippers. The reason why I have several sets, but they came with different things and they're just not high quality. I need to buy some. Although I've been doing it this way forever, so I'm just kind of used to doing it the hard way. Why not, right? Okay, so let's get these soldered into position. And what I'm going to do is loop that like so, and run that like so. So it's going to look like that. Get this first one in. I think I mentioned before, I've always wondered why all these electronics channels, or most of them, you guys have benches that look like a tornado went through it, and now I totally understand. Okay, so there's that one. One thing I do want to be careful of, I'm going to make sure that ground does not get close to positive channel there, or the positive. Okay. Good. Gotta remember to fix the ground.
So the way my mind works is I'm already thinking about what to do if the wires don't fit in that little keeper. And I'm not sure what I'll do if that is the case. So I'm going to pull this. I'm going to loop the, the ground for that channel back. Because there's some... Well, I guess it would only be touching the ground wire, so that's not a big deal. Well, it's going to touch it anyway. this way. There we go. Big blob of solder. All right. Now let's do the ground wire. And splice this back together. Gosh, I wish I would have been paying attention. I wouldn't have cut it. I think we have uh, we buy shrink wrap by the ton. Kidding, but I do have a ton of shrink wrap. I'm just gonna use this big piece. like to take solder. Pain in the ass. <sighs> Come on now. There, that one's good. Alright, so I'm going to clip these in here, solder this wire together, and, oh, my clip is gone. Where's my clip? There it is. So I will pick it back up here when I... Wow. This is not a high quality clamp. Okay, I think you get the picture. I'm going to use these to hold those two wires together. Solder them, shrink it, and then I'm going to put this back together. Put the record on. Well, maybe I'll come back and talk about this. Skipped over right putting that, uh, that back in, so I just rolled right into it. Okay, so I'm going to zip tie these wires together. So I want to make sure those RCA cables stay off of that belt. There's another belt here. That one feels pretty good. Alright, so there's a tie there. And there's one over here, but I think... I don't really see a reason to put one there. Well, you know, actually I do, I think. I 
want to zip tie the ground wire. Getting warm. I think I'm going to wrap things up here in a minute. Hopefully. Okay, so I'm looking for, oh, there it is. You'd think it'd be pretty hard to not spot this, but At least get these two tightened. Those kind of kind of sort of hold the base on. Okay, let's uh, try this out. See if we get sound from both channels. See if we have any ground hum. For some reason. Hopefully we don't. Okay, it's on phono. No hum. It's actually quieter than it was before. Oops, let's power this on. Sound from both channels. Yep, just want to make sure I got... This starts off on one channel on that song and then goes to the other channel. Okay, so... I just want to, I want to see that again. Because it looked to me like there was a little bit of a hesitation. Well, I think I still am going to get a belt for that because I don't trust that this will not give issues to a new owner down the road. So I'm not going to probably film putting a new belt on there, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a new belt for that, for that gear there. And I'll let this run. So what I normally do when I test a turntable, unless it's a manual table, um, any table with any type of complication, and uh, when I say compl complication, I mean like uh, auto return or you know a semi-auto turntable, full auto turntable, because I don't have all day to just sit and listen to records, I'll typically run two records on it. Maybe not at the same, t you know, the same sitting I guess I'm not sitting though I'm working in my garage so I'll, I'll put a record on it'll play in the background and that's why I also don't film everything because I'm all I'm testing turntables and stuff so um, and because of copyright and because you won't be able to hear me talk if I have this going I mean sometimes it'll be silently playing in the background but uh, sometimes I just like to listen to a record while I'm working I like to listen to music. So anyway, I'm going to button this up and uh, clean the dust cover as, as well as I can, that little kind of piece of uh, plexiglass, and come back and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here's the after. 
for now. Uh, this dust cover's in pretty bad shape. But again, you know, the whole purpose of this series is um, these are Goodwill finds, right? And you probably don't expect to find a brand new Lynn, you know, Sondek LP12 at the Goodwill or thrift shop for $8.99, right? So, but, you know, I, I would not pass up on this if I came across one at a thrift, thrift shop, uh, Goodwill, garage sale, maybe even Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace if it was at the right price. I mean, this has definitely seen better days, but, but now it's a working serviceable turntable. So I'm assuming auto return is going to work. Now, if there's a follow-on segment, then that means auto return didn't work, um, and I can test it out. But, you know, the problem is, unless you let's go up, go over, you know, even if I do it, right, so we can see the little red light going across. Even if I do it now, it doesn't mean that, you know, once I play the third record, it stops. And, you know, I mentioned I, I listen to one or two records, typically two records. Can't always guarantee it's going to be two, but, you know, there's only a limited amount of time I have to actually test this stuff. So, anyway. Unless you see another part advertised to this. And there it goes back. Oh, it's not going back. Okay, so I do have a problem. I have to sort out. Yeah, it's that belt. It's the belt for the for raising the arm. The uh, tone arm wasn't up. Once I tapped it, it raised the tone arm and then it went back. So like I was saying, right... Um, so anyway, I'm going to assume it's the belt. Once I get a new belt, I'll put it on. Then I'm going to test it. If there's another part, then that means that there was something else wrong with this. But I'm going to call this at least part one. Good for right now. So as always, if you like what you see, like, hit subscribe. Catch you in the next one. All right, belt kit, uh, or not the belt kit, but the belts came in. Put a new one on the Sansui. And it is working just fine. I'll show you that real quick. Press start. Goes over. I listened to like four records on it yesterday as I was cleaning up the garage. Drops exactly how it's supposed to. Comes up. I can send it over. I think you can see, the, hopefully you can see the red light there. Drops up and down. Sounds good. So I'm going to call the Sansui done. I think, um, now that I think about it, the only thing I didn't do was the spindle. Lube the spindle. But I know this one's really good. So I may take the top back off and look at that again, but I'll have to... I, I'm doing like four or five turntables at a time, so I don't exactly remember what I did on this one. So for now, I'm going to wrap this up. If I discover something else or something else pops up, I will shoot some more video, but I'm going to call the Sansui done. So as always, if you like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.